I want to get to one of the lawmakers who's going to actually have to do what you're telling him he has to do, and that is Wyoming Republican Senator John Barrasso, uh, who's also a doctor, we should note. He was a key negotiator in the efforts to come up with a Republican measure that would replace Obamacare. Uh, I do want to get to that, but picking up on where Stephen just left off, he says shut down may still happen if necessary to get this money for the border wall. It's $5 billion. Are Americans going to see a shutdown over Christmas? I would certainly hope not. I'm working to the fact of keeping the government open. I think that's what the American people expect of the people that they elect. Keep the government open. And if there's any sort of a shutdown, it would certainly only be a partial shutdown. Remember, Margaret, we, uh, through the appropriations process, already have approved 75 percent of the funding for the government for the next year. But I still think it's better to not have any sort of even a partial shut down, uh, whether it's over Christmas or any time. I don't think people benefit by You're that. in Republican leadership. Senator John Corn and your uh, colleague said there's no plan right now from the White House. Did you hear a plan here today? Do you know what the White House is asking you to do? Well, I know we're trying in the House and the Senate to come up with a proposal to get passed in both of those bodies before Friday the 21st and then send that to the White House, which I hope the president would choose to sign. And so that could be anything from a short-term continuing resolution that takes us right up to the beginning of a, of a Democratic majority in January? Or, I mean, what wiggle room there, is there? There are a number of different options. That's one. Another is a little longer term. Uh, I would like to get, actually, all the appropriations bills passed. I think we do much better governing uh, for our country if we do the whole thing through the appropriations process. We were able to do 75 percent of the funding. We still have a ways to go. But border security is critical mm -hmm. to this country. It, it is part, to me, of national security, along with our economic security, our energy security security. Border security is key to us as a nation. And I think many would agree with you. I guess it's the getting to that point that's the problem. Senator Schumer says no way, no how, no wall, period. Well, there are a lot of things you need to do with border security. One is a physical barrier, but also the technology, the manpower, uh, the enforcement, all of those things. And our current laws are in some ways an incentive for people to come to this country illegally, and they go through great risk and po possibly great so that harm. that could be a, a, another compromise, like Senator Susan Collins was out there talking about a $2.5 billion uh, compromise rather than the $5 billion that the president is asking for. Well, the, there are people working on this to get to a conclusion so the government will remain open, which is what I believe the American people would prefer. I want to switch to health care. Um, this ruling on Friday, uh, it seemed the timing caught some people by surprise, uh, but the decision was that Obamacare, according to this federal judge in Texas, was deemed unconstitutional. What do you make of that? Well, the, the one part of the health care law that we took out with the tax law was the individual mandate that people had to pay a fine. Uh, the Democrats didn't even offer an amendment to, to leave it in the bill because they know that of the people that were paying this fine, millions have paid the fine. Most of them earned less than 50000 a year. So it was very punishing the money they could have used to see a doctor for their child or their family. That point because so that the removal of that provision is what opened the court to be able to make this decision. It said if the mandate goes away, then other things go away. Mm -hmm. You know, as a doctor, people say to me, what does this mean to me? And for right now, very little. If you're a doctor, if you're getting treatment, if you have a pre-existing condition, if you signed up for Obamacare on this recent uh, sign-up period, it doesn't change a thing. But it could well, if the Supreme Court upholds this ruling. Which would be, a content we have a different make up of the Supreme Court. It may be several years till it gets there. But as a doctor, I will tell you, I focus on people with pre-existing conditions. I've always been focused, as I was working on health care legislation, to make sure people could get the care they need from a doctor that they choose at lower costs. And we didn't get that in Wyoming. We had a, after Obamacare was passed, many people lost their insurance. Premiums doubled. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't, a, that doesn't give people affordable insurance that's appropriate for them and their families. The coverage of pre-existing conditions was protected under the Affordable mm -hmm. Care Act. So if this ruling is upheld, that goes away. Are you, uh, as a Republican leader, looking to craft an entirely new law from whole cloth? Or are you looking at amending uh, the Affordable Care Act? Yeah, I think government never does big things really well. I'm for more of a step-by-step, -step, and I want to start with the first step of people with pre-existing conditions. My, my wife, Bobby, is a breast cancer survivor. She's been through three operations, chemotherapy twice. And I will tell you, as a husband, as well as a doctor, I am committed to helping people with pre-existing conditions. We can do that. There are a number of ways 
uh, to do it. Uh, one is what Maine has done in terms of their high-risk people, helping with them with additional subsidies, but at the same time, then it allows insurance to be much cheaper, more affordable for other people. So I want to do our, our children's health insurance plan that works across the country. It works so well because states have a bigger say in that. When I was in our state Senate in Wyoming, we knew that what we wanted to do in Wyoming may not fit what people would want in New York State. But if you give states that flexibility and freedom to do what works best with the money, I think it works much better for families and for patients. Republicans weren't able to repeal and replace with Republican majorities in both chambers. You're going to have to work with Democrats to get any kind of new legislation through. What are you actually, when does this begin? What are you actually proposing here? Yeah, and I want to work with additional Democrats. But what we're seeing right now from the Democrat side, and you see whether it was Bernie Sanders or so many of the Democrat candidates for president in 2020, they're talking about a different step away from Obamacare as well. They agree that Obamacare hasn't worked, and they're talking about a program of a complete government takeover of health care with increased taxes and fewer choices and longer lines. And that, to me, doesn't help people in the, in the long run. I talked to people yesterday. I was in Wyoming at a wreath ceremony at our, at our cemetery. I talked to somebody on Medicare. They said, we don't want Medicare for all. We've paid into Medicare our whole life. This isn't the time to put more people onto that program. We want to make sure that that is saved and strengthened and, and, and held for people that are already on the program and have paid in over their lifetime. Senator, thank you for being here. You certainly have your work cut out for you. Thanks for having and me. And we will be tracking uh, that.